Hello fellas, welcome back. Keep me say Paul. I've done a lot of videos with Paul. Most recent one, we had a look around his bikes <laughs> and that done great views. And a lot of people mentioned these pedal bikes, the BMXs. So I thought I'd come back down, we'll have a look around, we'll talk to Paul about his collection, why he bought them and a bit about the bikes. So what we've got made, that's a bit... I'm no expert. And Are you not? So, no, so if I get things wrong, I apologise. But like we all do, we've sort of... Grew up on pedal but Yeah, BMX uh -huh. was the thing. When I was 14, 15, BMXs had just come over. Big craze from America, weren't they? That's where it started. Is it America? Yeah, and obviously um, I started with the old rally burner, which everybody did, because they were cheap and cheerful, what, that rally, rally burner. Everyone had a rally burner. Everybody bike. had a rally burner. And then obviously all these different makes and models started coming out. And um, the one that stuck in my mind, and I remember it, was the, was the Skyway TA. Well, that was an American, big in America was Skyway. And what was clever about them was that it was all aero, they called it aerodynamic tubing, look, they're all <laughs> teardrop tubing. Right. So um, whether aerodynamics actually works on a pushbike <laughs> or not, I don't know. But, but I'll never forget, Adam, the price, you bought, a, you couldn't buy a Skyway complete bike. Right. You could buy the Skyway wheels, the handlebars and the frame and forks. And I remember a Skyway TA frame and forks was 165 quid. Back in the day? Back in the day. What kind of years we're talking here? Well, early 80s. Early 80s. 80s. And when you think a rally burner, don't quote me exact penny, but I think was about 60, 70 quid. Right. So you could buy a f two rally burners for less than a, than a Skyway TA frame and forks. So all the rich boys <laughs> had Skyway TAs. And I remember always, always wanting a Skyway TA. Did you ever rally? No, I, uh, used to, I used to do a little bit of racing, but I was crap at it. Did you? Yeah. I've always been quite tall and broad for my age. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, it's like anything when you do racing, anything. All whippersnappers beat you, don't they? They're all three stoners. <laughs> so I give it up quickly. I was more into freestyle, you know, doing tricks on bikes. Right, like, like wheelies and yeah, jumps and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. So the, the Skyway was mainly a race bike. That's why the aerodynamic tubing. So they were classed as the race bikes. It's nice and then bike obviously It's clean. Well, that, that's a reproduction. Is it? Med by Skyway, it's still the original company, and they re-released them. Now, I, I can't even remember. About 2010, something like that, I think. So is that brand new? Did you buy that new? Yeah, that's brand new. So I bought the Frame and Forks brand new, bought proper Skyway wheels for it. I mean, the, the scene now of BMX is massive. 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 Facebook pages all over, and, 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 you know, you buy some seats off people, and they want 300 quid for a seat. Really? You know, and there's a certain handlebar grip. You know, that you think would be a tenner. And certain ones, brand new in boxes, like 150 quid for a pair of grips. And you think, my complete bike for that. Uh, you, you mess about with Cosworth's Paul, you know what their yeah, parts are like. Exactly. So I built that bike up. And it was, in, in one of the previous videos where most people saw it, it had black Skyway wheels, black seat and black pads. Was that in, your, in the workshop? No, the... when it was in here. Right. And I've recently changed it all to white. Because it, I remember when I was a kid... Skyway were really good at advertising, which right. sells everything, doesn't it? And the, I remember, you'll probably find it if you Google it, one of the original Skyway adverts, there was three bikes in like a, a poster. One right. was a racing bike, so he was going over a, a jump thing. One was a freestyle, you know, someone doing freestyle tricks on it. And then the other one, it was like up in air and wheels were turned. And it was a chrome frame with all white wheels and that on it. And I always remember thinking, that bike looked mint. <laughs> so I purchased some white Skyway wheels for it, white seat. I, I already had the white pads and, and turned it into white, which I always just remember, really. Is that just go, go on eBay and find the bits? Or yeah, well, no, Facebook to be honest, groups and stuff? I don't tend to go on eBay much. Um, Facebook groups. Is that what you'd go for? Yeah, and find? there's a couple of good, one of them is the BMX Life, an old school BMX. And to be honest, the lads on there are real decent lads. Mm -hmm. They're really trustworthy. They all, you know, I think they're, they're one of the groups that have got it right on Facebook. If, if you're a messer or upset people, they just get you out. off. So everybody on there is trusting and everybody I bought parts off has been 100%. They've sent them straight away. They've packaged them properly. Uh -huh. The prices aren't cheap, but BMX parts aren't cheap, but they're fair. Uh -huh. And I can't complain really. No, so I mean, as I say, I bought the seat, the wheels recently and changed it all to white. Just solid plastic seat. Yeah, yeah. But they're them cashy mat ones, which are quite a good, a good they're seat. They're good brands, are they? Uh, Apparently. Yeah. 
Like I say, I'm no expert, really. And then, so you don't ride around your local village on that, then? No, oh, no. I'm too, <laughs> yeah. I'd be tired pedalling it to the door, mate. That's a genuine Skyway, is that one? That's one of the original old 1980s ones. And you could buy a TA in white, like that one, or chrome. They only did them in the two. Right. And you could buy a standard frame or an extra long. So if you were tall right. like me, you bought that one, which is, an extra I, long. I think two inches or something longer frame which is a lot more comfortable to ride if you're tall uh -huh. the extra long one so i've got a chrome extra long and the white standard frame so that's not as long as that one that's right that's about two inches longer is that frame than that one yeah. um but that's got the bars i preferred i always like them we used to call them flat top bars right because they're obviously oh, all right uh -huh. and i like them i always preferred them i always had the lay back seat post on them uh -huh. again i was tall Give you a bit so, more space. Exactly, get, get you further away from your handlebars. So I have them nice. too. This was one of the freestyle bikes, Harrow Freestyler, one of the probably the best freestyle bikes you could buy in, at, the, in, you know, in, at the time. They put the two bars on the top, because one of the tricks is people used to stand on that. Right. And let go of handlebars and <laughs> surf along, you know. <laughs> I've tried that a few times. Never ended well, <laughs> to be honest. And then obviously you'd have bits like this on here where you could put your feet on and uh -huh. stand on them. You had, had the foot there. Yeah, that you could stand on if you were real clever. I mean, a wheelie was about my limit. Really, I was going to see A uh, couple of endos and bunny hops, but, <laughs> you know, same again, the trick bar, so you could stand on there or turn on and sit on it. And Is that why that's knurled then? For your, for yeah, your, to get for a bit your, of grip. grip. Yeah. Cool. So, so they, were, they were a cool bike in the day, the Arrow Freestyler. And then that one came out. The Firebird Freestyle, DP Freestyler. Now that was quite a budget bike that. Was it? Yeah, again you bought the frame and forks, because a lot of these manufacturers you see didn't sell complete bikes. You'd have manufacturers that only sold frames, people that only sold wheels, and then you could build, you could custom build a bike what you wanted. Now I always used to like this frame, and, and what they did cleverly was they lowered, this is real narrow there, so it was a lot easier to stand on here to get up and stand on it and do your stunts yeah do your stunts yeah your tricks but them wheels i'll never forget them wheels i don't know if you do you remember them no there was a trick everybody used to do with them z rims they were right. unbreakable you couldn't really the z -rim. and what they used to, i'll get by count and i'll show you what they used to do i mean i'm not going to do it because i don't want to damage the wheel but what you used to do you used to ride along right and you used to swing the back end of the bike round and used to slam it into the floor because these rims would bend. All right. You couldn't break them. You, basically, that rim, you could do what they called, a, they used to call it a frame toucher. And you used to slam it into the ground sideways that hard that that part of your frame used to touch the floor. Really? And the wheel used to bend like that. <laughs> and it used to spring back violently and about chuck you off the bike. God. And it used to make them a bit buckled because the spokes would kink. But the rim, you couldn't break the rim. Is it just metal, the rim? No, it's plastic. Ah, right. But it used to spring back into place. So all you'd do, you'd ah. go home after about four goes, because it was like that, because it was buckled. <laughs> and you'd spent the rest of the day truing it up by, you know, tightening all your spokes up. And then you'd go out and do it again. Are they expensive, the rims, now to buy? Are they? Them wheels, because these are brand new, they've never... Because do you know the only thing I liked about them, and most people did... They look cool with that writing on the rim. I was going, I like the writing, I noticed it. It's the well, first thing I noticed. They? But obviously, as soon as you start breaking, it That's what it I off. thought. When I looked, I thought, that's a nice rim. But yeah. as soon as you press that brake, it's just going to rub it off. So you can't really put Z rims on a bike you want to use. Because they, they, they don't look the same without it. So these are obviously... These are brand new. Are and they being manufactured, or is it... No, these are the original ones. So these are like 30 year old? Yeah. But brand new. There's a lot of new old stock stuff kicking about. Is that? You know, well, when you think about it, you know, bikes used to change quite a lot. I mean, BMXs were in for probably about 10 years. I mean, they never really stopped them. No. But the phase died after maybe, I don't know, 10 years, shall we say. And then people went on to mountain bikes, came in and... That's what I had, mountain bikes. Yeah, you're too young for these, aren't you? So what happened is a lot of the bike shops would have had mountains and mountains of seat posts and brake calipers and pedals and that you know they used to have on display racks hundreds of them right that when bmx's all of a sudden became uncool uncool they had they used to shove it all in back storeroom didn't they and, and just got left 
like I say, now you go on these Facebook pages and there's a bloke who'll turn up with, I've just bought all this off my local bike shop and he's got 50 sets of Shimano DX pedals and everybody's getting all giddy with themselves. <laughs> and, you know, the MX brakes. and Because the bike scene was just like the car. You know, you'd have... You'd have a Billy Basic brake caliper on your bike, and then all of a sudden these MX quick release came out, and everybody'd run to the bike shop on a Saturday with a pocket money and got to the have these MX quick release brakes. And you know, I mean, some of these bikes now, Adam. I mean, there's there's one I've wanted for a long time. It's called a Trick Star, right? And it's got loads of different brackets welded on it, you know, for freestyle riding. All oh, right. And it's just a really cool bike, and I've seen them selling for like five, six thousand quid Whoa. in mint condition. Mint condition. But it's like a car, you know. You'll say to somebody, "Oh, it's got a stage three head on it, and it's got this." <laughs> and you'll see these adverts on these BMXs, and it's got a so and so head stock and so and so bars and, and so, so pedals and, and stuff like, like that and rims. You know, I remember them calipers on there. Look, them MX quick release. These ones. Yeah, I remember when they came out because you know trying to take your wheel out of a bike was a uh -huh. bit of a nightmare. But what they did, they made them so that you could turn that. Ah, right. And that there were like, whoa, <laughs> put MX quick release brakes on. <laughs> but these wheels now, I've seen these wheels, brand new, all stock like these. 400, 500 quid. Really? Yeah. If they're genuine ones, uh -huh. like anything, they've done a lot of reproduction of things. Right. I don't think, the re I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever seen a reproduction Z-Rim Z -rim released. But then, You'll get some with a what they call a so and so Shimano Suzy or something. They were slightly more because they've got different hubs on them. And, but you know, that the, I mean, I was started collecting, I had 13 at one point pedal bike, a pair of BMXs. BMXs. And I thought, you need to grow up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I sold a load of them, did you? I did. And then, and then I, you know, well, it's finding places to put them. Isn't it really? And and I had them all in a spare bedroom in the house and you couldn't see them. They were all stacked on top of it, you know, laying on each other and that with bits of cloth. So they didn't uh -huh. And you just think one day, oh, I'm going to sell them. And I had um, Mongoose, California, with, with pro class rims that used to have holes drilled all the way around inside it rim to make them lighter. You know, and I sold all them and, and I was selling them for like five and six hundred quid. Uh -huh. And that was a lot of money 10, 15 years ago for a BMX. It was crazy right. money. Now these. Thousands. Oh, yeah. What do you reckon this one's worth them? If, I, if I'm honest, mate, I, could, I, I don't actually really know. You don't respect with the prices? No, because I've had them years. Yeah, I would have think that in that condition because it is absolutely mint. It, it is mint. It, it hasn't got, like we were saying earlier, the absolute best of all the components on it. Uh -huh. It's got... The nice head rims, it's got nice bits on it, but it hasn't got all the, the ultimate things. So I would think that's probably worth, I don't know, a thousand, twelve hundred quid. Could, right. be even, could be even worth a bit more. That one's probably worth eighteen, two thousand. The green one? Yeah. The Skyway, I've seen them around two to two and a half grand. Right. For the but white it, one? Yeah. That one with it being the reproduction one's worth less, that's probably worth fifteen hundred quid. Cool. We've still got a lot of money for her. The girl, they're just nice. Right, they're cool. The cool. Again, that's, it's just. That's it. I never had a BMX as a kid. Didn't you? No, I was always mountain bikes. Always oh, mountain right. bikes. I remember, mate, honestly, when I was a kid at school, you know, 13, 14. BMX. You, run, you had to run home from school and you'd upstairs get changed because I, was, I wasn't a posh kid. I had to get changed and put my old clothes right. on. And I'd be out on that BMX and, you know, when it, when it was winter, as soon as it got dark, until someone shouted if you're in. Yeah, you have to be in before it gets dark. Uh, and then you'd come in at nine o'clock and get your ear bent. <laughs> because you were supposed to be in before it got dark and you never did. Oh, I used to be out just hours and hours. Hours? And hours. Just never, ever was in house. No, I was you know, like never today, was. Oi! Little bugger. <laughs> <laughs> all, all kids today is looking at a screen. Ah, uh, screens? Computers and that? Yeah. And all, honestly, it, it was all Saturday, all Sunday, every single night without fail. I was. No matter if it was hammering it down with rain, I'd be out with my uh, BMX. I used to wake up, do me teeth if I had to, yeah. and I would be straight out. <laughs> yeah, it's what you did. It's like, oh, God, do me teeth, two minutes, you may to be at the door, and I'll I'll you'd be knocking on the house. I'll tell you a funny story, this. It shouldn't really, but it was funny. I used to live at Eastfield Estate. It was a council estate near Scarborough, and it was a bit rough. Uh -huh. And where our shops were, you know, you always had shops. Uh -huh. A few shops, didn't you, in council estates? And they had some brick, like, but that high, maybe. 
I don't know what they were really. They were like a, just a brick wall all the way around with a, like a concrete top and I don't know what the hell they were there for but and they were maybe the size of this building. And we used to you, bunny up onto them and that, you know, oh, right, about okay. that, jump off them and all that, because one smart ass. You remember bush shelters with flat tops on you uh -huh. years ago? He used to do what they call a drop off. He used to do drop offs off bush shelter. What, like 10 foot up? Oh, he was like, he was a hero to us. He was yeah, like man. the dog's what's it? He was, he used to do a drop off <laughs> off a bush shelter. Yeah, I mean, kids nowadays do that on mountain bikes and nobody, they jump off buildings, don't they? And anyway, somebody complained to police about us on these BMXs on these. Walls are what we used to call them. Like I said, I don't know exactly what they were, but we used to just jump on and off them. And anyway, coppers turned up, and you know, like you did when you were a kid, it was funny to get chased off cops, right. wasn't it? Anyway, there was it was like a little precinct, and there were shops down both sides, and these two walls were at top end at precinct where Main Road was. Well, these coppers got out of car, and you know, like you did when you were kids, <laughs> <It's a fellow laughs> just for a bit of crap, and we'd jump off wall. We used to pedal like hell down precinct. And there was an alleyway between chip shop and laundrette. <laughs> and he used to dart down there. Well, coppers used to jump back in car, come round back at shops where the alleyway used to lead to. And you'd be sat there in the bottom of the alleyway and you always used to sit like that <laughs> and give me this to police. You know, and then we'd turn around and shoot back up alleyway, back up precinct <laughs> onto this wall. And we did it one day, it must have been two or three hours. Watch his torment the police. We were knackered. <laughs> and all we did was torment these police and we thought we'd got them rumbled, do you know what I mean? We're, they're never going to catch us. Of course, they had radios, didn't they? Well, they'd obviously radioed another car who'd come the bottom way because there was another road at bottom. And they obviously waited till we were at top end on these walls. Copper was parked over there watching us and we were teasing him sat on these walls. He'd got another copper to go back down bottom <laughs> of that alleyway. So anyway, he drove up in cop car, they're giving it this, jumped off wall, pedalled down precinct, turned right, went out alleyway, and we came through alleyway, right. <laughs> and I remember getting checked, no, I'm in cop car. Did you? Shoved biking back. Got a right rollicking off my mother. You know? <laughs> but, you know, coppers them days were ah. different. Work. They'd, they'd wink at your mum and say, he's had us chasing him for two and a half hours. <laughs> you know, and he'd say, I hope you're going to reprimand him, you know. <laughs> But just, you know... Uh, it's a shame kids go and do that now. Well, I don't think coppers would be that <laughs> yeah. impressed, but coppers were, you well, know, they weren't busy. Yeah. They were having a bit of fun with us, but... Kids being kids at the end of the day as well, isn't it? It was just fab times, weren't uh, it? You know, different, you'd, you'd different spend day. hours and hours learning to wheelie, wouldn't you? And if you could get length of this shed, oh, it was incredible, weren't uh, you? And then next time you'd learn and get another two foot, wouldn't you? <laughs> But, yeah, amazing, mate. And they're amazing. just like anything, mate. They're just part of your memory of being a childhood kid, memories. Yeah, just, and, and to me, I sit down and I look at them and I think. And the funny thing is, you know, like I look at that skyway and I always remember thinking, it's all I ever wanted as a kid. The skyway? It was a skyway to you. Chrome skyway to you was all I ever wanted. But I just. We were wealthy enough to afford it. Uh, uh, it looks nice as well, mind, with the anodized bits and the blue and the. Yeah. Like the Chrome and it's a nice bike. Yeah, they're nice. I'd see why you collect them. To be fair, I did have a few goes on that one when I built Did you? Yeah. And popped a few wheelies and fell off. <laughs> I was going to say, I bet, you know I bet you weren't watching God. Oh, look at that. <laughs> right, look at that idiot over there. <laughs> and I got, I got full length at driveway once. What, in a wheelie? Oh, I was chuffed as a... Oh, I was all right. No, I was Get like, there, look at me, can still do it. <laughs> and then I did it a couple of days later, fell off and cracked me head and I thought, <laughs> you know what, <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm not doing this anymore and I've never ridden it since, like. <laughs> That's it, fellas. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, looking around Paul's bikes. If you want to see more Paul's stuff, there's mountains of videos below you can check out, whether it's these motorbikes, RS500 Cosworths, just all kinds, isn't it, mate? We've done a few videos now. <laughs> but yeah, again, mate, thanks for, thanks for having us down and no, showing us you're around. you're welcome, you're welcome. Shame we didn't feel fit enough to have a go on them. <laughs> I'm still all right, man. It's just, we'll have to blow the tyres up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, again, thanks a lot, mate. No problem. I hope you enjoyed watching it, fellas, and I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one.